Tonight we've started doing the first work on the Audi, the project car for SJS Automotive. Both front tyres have been sat flat for a few days, so we decided to get them sorted. So if you leave them flat too long, it'll end up damaging the tyres. We've taken the first one off. And I think we've found the leak. So we're going to take the tyre off, clean all the rim up, and hopefully get that back sealed up again. So we can see there's no damage to the tyre. So basically, we need to clean the rim up. Now what we're going to use is a little Scotch Bright on a buffing wheel. Now as you can see, the room's cleaning up nicely and what we're doing is removing all that corrosion which is what we're letting it leak. Now we are going to have the wheels reconditioned on this car eventually. But I want to get the clutch and flywheel done and the other things done, get it to an MOT, get it to a point where it's a decent car again, then we'll do the finishing touches like reconditioning the wheels. So for now, we're going to clean it up and see. Now, as you can see, we've cleaned up all the back half of the rim. We are also going to use some bead seal. Just to make sure it seals. Probably doesn't really need this with us cleaning all the corrosion off, but it just means that these tyres are definitely going to stay up for now until we get to the point of reconditioning. Hoping that the other front wheel is just the same problem because it's a nice easy fix for now. So that's a coating of that the whole way around. Just going to dry off the inside edge. See if we can get this back on without using tire soap on the back, which it has. So that that will seal nicely with the bead seal. Obviously it's positive that there was no cracks in the rim.
without checking, I believe it should be about 34 psi in these. This is what I'm going to put in for now. So we've got 34 in that. That now should all be sealed. We will give it a quick check just to make sure. See, we're not getting any bubbles anymore. Looking slightly less sorry for itself as it's got air in both front tyres. The flywheel is that bad on this, I didn't want to start it and move it unnecessarily, so I've literally worked in a puddle to do the other front wheel. The only time this will get started and I may even push it in instead of running it when we're doing the clutch and flywheel because the flywheel is that bad. I don't want it to let go and end up coming out through the gearbox. But it's the first job's done. The tires are now holding air. There's many things we're gonna do to this. I'll probably go too far. Um, I'm looking at the calipers now and thinking we can recondition those and powder coat them a nice color, tidy up the brakes, paint all the center bells on the brake discs. Same with the rear calipers and with the wheels reconditioned and a good clean and polish and buff, bits of bodywork done, dents sorted. It'll make a really nice motor again. Today, we've gone round with the orange pen to mark up any areas that need PDR work. So as you can see, there's a few on that front corner. Nothing around the back. Three little dents on the rear quarter. And that's about covered for PDR. So we'll add a video later on in the series where the PDR takes out and he will come round and do all the dents and we'll show you how that's done. We're gonna start the job of cleaning the inside up a little bit. As you can see, it needs a good clean. So we're gonna move all the things out of the back and out of the front into the boot ready for the guy to come and collect what he needs out of there and then we can give it a good clean. So you can see we're still looking fairly bad even once we've cleared out all the rubbish. The mats have been thrown, they are no good. When we get the cash over on the go, as I say, the mats are going in the bin, there's got a hole in them, we'll get new mats. We're obviously gonna have to take the seats out, because you can see underneath, everything is just absolutely caked in dust. This is gonna take some cleaning, but we'll give it a good makeover. Now we found these tornado guns to be a really good tool in helping get into little gaps and crevices and get things clean and see how it works in here. Now the downside of these tornado guns is every time you use it around the area you have to hoover and it creates a mess again. But after two or three goes you get everything out from the gaps and corners that's loose then you can over it all up and it does make a lot better job.
Now I've valeted some cars in my time and I find it quite therapeutic and I enjoy cleaning them. But this has probably got to be one of the worst I've done. I mean look at this dust that's coming up out of the floor carpet. That's been hoovered and looked fairly clean and then using a tornado on it and my god this is bad. Um, this took five, six attempts at blowing it out, hoovering, blowing it out, hoovering and obviously this put a load of mess over the rest of the car. So I was going back and forth and hoovering everywhere but eventually we got it something like. So we're on to the final footwell. We've worked his way around, um, did the rear first, then moved into the drivers, and obviously then into passenger footwell. I mean, we've spent an hour and a half, nearly two hours so far on getting the carpets clean, and we've still got the seats to do, all the plastics to wipe down. Luckily, we're not gonna have to take the seats out because the little tornado gun that we've been using, it allows you to blow it under all the seat rails and under the seats. It does create the mess going around the car, which you have to re-hoover a number of times. But I think it's a quicker thing to do than taking the seats out. It still allows you to do a proper cleaning job. And even with the seats out, you'd still have to use a tornado gun to get the deep ingrained dust and muck out the carpet. So you're going to create the mess and have to hoover the same number of times. The only difference is you're going to be spending time taking the seats out. We're now going to use the AutoSmart Tornado gun which also has uh, liquid in there so we use Brisk. That one is like a refresher, cleaner, so it helps to rejuvenate and get rid of any bad smells but also the detergent liquid also helps to do a, a bit of a deeper clean than just using the air. Obviously the parcel shelf, once you've used the liquid, it comes up really well. It's not perfect, the shelf's not in brilliant condition, but it certainly looks a lot better than it did. So before we start to wet back the seats to get rid of all the stains, we're going to wipe down all the plastics, all the door cards, all the central plastics, centre console, back of the seats. There's a good layer of dust all over them, especially from using the tornado to clean the carpets. And I really want to get rid of all the surface dust um, out the car and then we can work on giving the seats a good wet back. And then that will be a, um, a reasonable basic clean to start with. We'll get the rest of the work done that the car needs doing, get the MOT done and then we'll do a final valor at that point. But as it is, it's getting it to a stage where I'm happy to sit in it um, before you got in it and got out dirtier than before you got in, even in your work clothes. Um, as it is now, it's looking a lot better um, and I can't wait to get this finished. Now there is some marks on the door cards, obviously it's been a builder's car and he's used it for work, putting tools in so there's marks on the door cards, broken speaker grill on the driver's rear, various little things like that but I'm going to try and get as many things replaced and repaired as we can. Um, the value of the car has got a ceiling, um, it's got 180,000 on the clock, it, I mean it's going to have a new clutch and flywheel in it and various other things. So it's going to be a good car to buy when it's done and we'll make it as good as we can 
but we will have to draw a line somewhere on the things that we're repairing and replacing. Now when we started wet back in the seats you can see they're coming up well. We're using the Karsha Puzzy, um, really good tool. I've had it probably 10 years now, not used it very much, but I've recently got it out and got it set back up again. Um, it's really good. Um, it gets a lot of the dirt out and it cleans better, it gets rid of smells as well so it leaves a nice fragrance in there, we've got the proper cashew tablets for using it. You can see it's still leaving a few stains on there, so we get the Otsmart Tornado gun on those, the wet one, and that actually removes the stains and then allows us to go back over with this and it gives us um, a nice clean seat again, they just need to dry out now. There's also a few marks in the leather seats where I'm guessing tools have been sat on them, especially on the rear seats where the leather's been stretched. So I'm going to try an old trick um, of getting a steam iron on those and the steam generally tightens the leather up and gets rid of the creases and the marks. So I'll hopefully have that in the video as well later on in the series. So I've just got the um, Artsmart Tornado set up again with the fluid turned on full. Basically, you just go over the stain a few times, the air blasts the fluid in, and what the wet vac can't do, this will generally remove. Um, not had anything other than maybe glues and super glues that I've not been able to get out previously. Um, but this has worked, as you can see. The stain's gone. We get the wet vac back on it, and um, we're good to go to the next seat. So we're coming to the end of what is approximately a four hour interior valet at this moment in time. Um, obviously we've wet backed all the seats, it's been quite a thorough clean, it needed it though. Um, but we've got the car to a point where um, the interior now looks reasonable. It's going to have another valet to finish off, um, the leather will all get treated. Everything will get cleaned in the crevices so we'll go around all the dash gaps with a brush and things like that. Just finish off and give it some final detailing. So the interior will actually look 95% of what it should do. Obviously there's some marks and some bits of damage on door cards, the odd nick in the seats and things like that. Those kind of things are expected on a car of this age. But what we want to do is make the car at a standard that when somebody comes to look at it they're happy to buy it knowing the mileage, knowing the age and knowing the condition and it's only going to be a couple of grand car, it's not going to be anything extravagant but it will give somebody um, a decent car that's quite high spec and hopefully they'll be happy with it. Final thing we're going today, split door seals. We're using the Seachem CE10 Flexible Bonder it's really difficult to do this with one hand, but I'm going to try. So, you just add a line of your flexible bonder along where the seals come apart. All this is quite difficult with one hand filming. And then I use a ruler to hold it in position. goes off pretty quickly that's already taken you see and 
no longer a loose flappy door seal another tidy up job got a little bit seeping out there let's clean that up as you can see seals attached again just a little tidy up job we do use some CKM CE113 accelerator, which you lift the edge up and you spray that along the outer edge. And then just to send it off, you just use your Milwaukee heat gun because your activator only works once it's dried. So once that has then dried off, you can then put the line on like we did, press it down. And again, if you use a ruler, helps you get it in a straight line. If you push it on with your fingers, you'll find it can end up wiggly sometimes. Whereas if you push it with a straight line, you can get it in the right position. And that is the door seal all repaired. The aftermath of a three hour cleaning session. As you can see, there is a massive difference. We've wet back to all the seats, all the carpets have been cleaned. The rear has had all the seats wet backed and we're gonna steam the leather to make that go back to shape. So that'll look sweet soon. And as you can see, there's some general marks on backs of the panels and on the door cards, which there's nothing we can do about. We may get door cards and tidy it up a little bit more. But as you can see, it is a totally different car to what we started with three hours ago. It's been some hard graft. My old knees are creaking. The wind is blowing in seeds. But in general, we're now looking a whole lot better than what we were. For some final cleaning like that mark on the dash we'll get off at a later date with some tar and glue remover we've got to be a bit more intricate in this cleaning but what i wanted to do was get the bulk of it something like just to show some progress and get a video made 